Good morning, friends. Um, as you can see, I'm coming live from the workshop again, my garage, where we're still got projects going on with this truck that we're working on. I hope you had time this morning to spend with Jesus in a sense of being able to worship. Maybe the song list that we sent, you've been able to just um, praise him and draw close to him. So I just want to say thank you for joining me this morning, a chance to share a little about the vision and the mission um, sharing the message and love of Jesus with people around us and how we're going to do that together in this day and age. Um, we are in the beginning process of this whole coronavirus and we don't know what the future holds. We do know that right now in this time we're not able to gather together as a large group and so I miss that. I miss our time together in that way but for the foreseeable future this is a little bit about what we'll have to do with a little bit of social media and personal interaction that way. And so I, I'm hoping that you get a chance to connect with the, your family and others through the idea of calling and texting and, and other forms. So, so as we move along, we want to experience what Jesus has for us and see the life-changing difference that he is making. And have, have you been experiencing some of that? I had sent you a couple days ago, John 14, about the peace that Jesus was offering, that place where you can find assurance, where you can find comfort, where in the midst of being connected with him, there is something um, all new that goes on with you um, because Jesus wants you to experience that. He said this to his disciples back in John 14 because he did not want them to conform to the patterns of the worry in their present world that they were having to go through. They were caught up in a lot of difficulties and they were just waiting for Jesus to be responsive. I hope that you had a chance to read through John chapter 14 to, to remember the great words of Jesus that he gave us a gift. He said, my peace I give, give to you. My peace I'm actually leaving with you. He did not want them to uh, get caught up in what the world was um, and the temporary feeling that they give, but he he wanted them to, to say, our hearts are not troubled because we don't have to be afraid because we know, Jesus, you're giving us this wonderful gift. And not only that, the gift of his Holy Spirit, which he provides that lives within us, reminds us over and over that we are God's dearly loved children. So how does Jesus transform our fears into courage? What are the steps that he takes in that? And let me just give you a couple of those this morning. First of all, begin to trust that Jesus is fully aware of what is happening right now, and he desires to offer himself as a safe haven for you. He wants you to trust him. He knows what's going on. I mentioned that. Whatever fears, whatever worries, whatever concerns that you have, you can come to him with those. Jesus reiterates in John chapter um, 16, a little bit further on, verse 33, um, he says this, I have told you all these things, reminded you of why I came, so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have what? We're going to have trouble. He says that, but take heart, I have overcome the world. That's a beautiful word, isn't it? I have overcome. It was one of my favorite words in college and in seminary when I was studying the Greek language. I looked up every possible passage that would have that because I liked that idea. And it is a broad, big, huge idea of what it means to actually overcome. It's the idea that we conquer. It's the idea that we carry forward into victory that is already ours. It's to prevail over whatever obstacle is there, to subdue what is holding you back or blocking your way. It is victorious in that idea. And Jesus reminds us that he is the one who overcame the world. He invites us into that. Our connection with him is what gives us the ability to experience the peace that he is offering. And so let, let me give you an example of what this looks like. On your car, you have shock absorbers. Here's an, here's an old one right here. And the shock absorber um, is to 
help the car to absorb all the bumps, all the difficulties, all the harsh road conditions. All that you drive over every day and it's to keep you and the people in your vehicle safe. It's necessary for you to experience uh, a smoother ride. It can take blow after blow after blow thousands of times um, that it drives over potholes and bumps and, and curbs and whatever else it is. It's able to take those. Um, and you can tell when it's working. Um, and because it's working, you don't feel that as much. It gives you comfort. The shock absorber is what connects the frame of your vehicle and keeps your wheels firmly planted on the ground. That's, that's part of its design. Without shocks, your vehicle is dangerous. You need them. In fact, every car and truck that's made is designed to have these shock absorbers. It's what's absolutely necessary for them. You would not plan to have a vehicle without them. Jesus gives us something like that. He gives us the Holy Spirit. Um, it's like the shock absorber in your vehicle. He calls the Holy Spirit the comforter, the advocate, um, who stands between us and the difficulties that we are facing. Um, this is the shock absorber I just picked up a moment ago. This is from the truck I'm working on. It is not in good shape. Um, it has seen better days. It probably stopped working some time ago. No one probably noticed. Um, they were probably driving along on this thing and didn't notice because it goes bad very, very slowly. And uh, so you don't notice what's happening. Um, and because you just get used to it over time. And as it bucked and banged its way along the ground, um, the person probably wasn't aware that it had gone bad. And this is one of the problems we face as believers. We actually, um, as we go along in our life, don't realize that the Holy Spirit needs to be attended to. Um, we don't give him what he needs to thrive. Um, basically, his ability to help us, to support us, to be there for us, to keep us from all the difficulties that come up, um, we lose out on that because we are not reliant upon him. This shock has lost all of its power to do what it was designed to do. And this is the second step. I would say, in how Jesus transforms our fears into courage. We consistently rely on the Holy Spirit to give us wisdom and comfort. We consistently rely on Him. He's the one who provides that when the difficulties come so that we are not overwhelmed. Romans 15, 13 says this, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace. By the way, that's fruits of the Spirit as you trust in him, as you rely upon him, so that you may overflow with the hope by the power of the Holy Spirit that lives within you. Did you catch that? All of a sudden we overflow with hope. We, we just, it just comes bubbling out of us because the Holy Spirit now has power in our life to do what we can. I like what uh, Francis Chan has said in his book, The Forgotten God, reversing our tragic neglect of the Holy Spirit. Um, he, says, he says this, It is the Holy Spirit who gives us confidence so we can enjoy intimacy with our Creator. Though I do not believe God gives this Spirit solely for our personal benefit, it is undeniable that one of the greatest aspects of being in relationship with the Holy Spirit is the intimacy, security, and encouragement He brings us. It is then we can serve God as our beloved child rather than a stressed out, guilt-ridden slave. The Holy Spirit wants us to experience what it means to have such reliance upon Him that we feel loved and we overflow with this hope. I like what 2 Corinthians 4, 7 through, through 11 says. I think it's a very powerful verse um, because it explains a little bit about this hope that we have. But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from who? Is from God. This all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. We are hard-pressed on every side, but we're not tr crushed. Perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not abandoned. Struck down, but not destroyed. We always carry around in our body the death of Jesus 
so that in the life of Jesus, he can be revealed in our body. For we who are alive are always being given over to death for Jesus' sake, so that his life may be revealed in our mortal body. It means we surrender ourselves to him. We rely upon him. He's the person who we can hold on to. When you consistently learn how to rely on the Holy Spirit to give you wisdom and give you comfort, suddenly you will find those places where all the worry, all the fear, um, all the anxiety that comes with the problems of life now can be supported like that shock absorber, right? It's absorbing all of those things time after time again. And it is wonderful that we don't have to be distracted or overwhelmed and live in fear. So how do, how do we do that then? How, how do we experience more of the Holy Spirit? Well, for one thing, I think some of you need to just turn your TV off. Um, I know you're listening for what's taking place in the world, and that's okay, but a consistent influx of that without having anything to balance it out that God offers, it's going to take you down a difficult pathway. Spend time reading the Psalms, praying through them, listening to the song list that we send. Go on a prayer walk. Do something that connects with Jesus himself, the place where you can just spend that time with him. It's necessary. Pay attention to that. Um, so let me give you um, one more step that will help you to transform um, that fear, um, that worry, that concern you have and into a place of courageous living. First John 5, same author who wrote the book of John, the Gospel of John, also says this. This is love for God, to obey his commands. And his commands are not burdensome, for everyone born of God overcomes the world. Do you hear that again? Everyone born of God overcomes the world. Isn't that a beautiful gift? Isn't that quite remarkable? We overcome the present circumstances are with what is going on because we love Jesus and because he loves us. This is the victory that has overcome the world. Even our faith, our trust in Jesus. Who is that overcomes the world? Only he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. Because we have this belief and we trust him and we rely upon him, we know Jesus is aware. Jesus understands what's going on. Jesus is present with us. His Holy Spirit's working within us. We now can live differently. And, and, and what does this mean? How do we live differently? Well, number three, by doing what God calls us to do. We love him, and then we tangibly find ways to love others. This is what he's called us to do. This is what we do day by day. Francis Chan also said, it's much less demanding to think about God's will for your future than it is to ask him what he wants you to do in the next 10 minutes, right? It's always great to kind of think out there and, you know, hey, Lord, what do you have for my future? And just kind of leave it out there. But to say, Lord, what do you want me to do right now in this moment with the opportunities that are before me? So the question is, how can you participate in the things that God is calling you into right now, calling us into to show God's love um, to the world around us. So let me give you some tangible ways to do this. Um, there are some families um, right now who are in our community who are struggling. Um, I know that Family Services of Rochester is in need of these donations. They need unopened toilet paper. They need unopened diapers and unopened cleaning supplies, and preferably if they're unused. So, so if you look at that, <laughs> if you've been hoarding any of that kind of stuff, what a great opportunity for you to share. Or even as you're going out the store for your own needs, pick up an extra one, know that you're going to drop it off over at 1625 Highway 14, uh, Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Um, I'll put some of these things that I'm talking about on our website so you can go to them so you know um, where you can actually help out with some of those things. There are kids in need of meals. Um, we know that there are families who are struggling in our community. You can let them know that Riverside, John Adams, Mayo High School is serving lunches to kids, zero to 18, every, every day, Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. until 12.30 p.m. You might know some families who could really benefit by that. What about our local restaurants, people we know? 
Steve Dunn, who has um, been part of New Day now um, since he's come here, um, is the owner of Taco Jed, and uh, he was trying to keep his employees employed. Go over there, pick up some food, um, help him out, um, take, take it out and let them know, hey, we're thinking about you. Um, maybe that's some other places too if you know the owners. Just let, let's find our way to help them out. Channel one, donations they're looking for. Um, you have been faithful givers here at New Day. We've been able to help some people out um, through our benevolent and other areas. Thank you for that. Continue to do that. That's a huge piece. Um, and thank you for showing compassion and caring for those. This is basically doing what God calls us to do. We see the needs. We respond to those. Oh, oh and by the way, um, as I'm thinking about this, I just got a text from Jeff Urban um, on, on Saturday, and he said, you have three to four people who could help clean a six-bedroom unit Monday morning. Um, we want to get it ready um, for family promise to use for some of the families. So if you're available Monday morning, give me a call. Um, I'll have my phone number and my email there, and please do that, and we'll go over and we'll help them out. God provides us opportunities. If there was ever a time that the church could be responsive, this is the time, my friends. Um, I'll post, like I said, these opportunities on there. You might know you have neighbors, you have friends, you have people around you. Just stop, take a look, be responsive. So let me remind you of three ways that God transforms our fear into courage. Number one, begin to trust that Jesus is fully aware of what is happening and offers himself as a safe haven to come to. Secondly, God will transform your fears into courage when you consistently rely upon the Holy Spirit to give you comfort and wisdom and direction in your life. If you consistently do that and you're nurturing that and you're taking the time, he will guide you. And the third is simply doing what God calls you to do. You love him, that overflows with hope to the world around you, and you're able to do tangible acts of true compassion. This is what God prompts us to do. So as we practice these things, my friends, God is with us in the midst of this. You are his beloved child. He loves you in an extraordinary way. He will be there for you. He will not abandon you. He will give you a strength in the midst of this. Um, please trust him, rely upon him, turn to him, and then let that overflow to the people around you. I am grateful for you, and as we're on this journey, um, I look forward to, to seeing you soon. Go in God's grace and strength.